getting you ready for game number three already in the 2019 Cleveland Browns season. This is the best podcast available. I'm Jason Gibbs. He's Nick Shook. He's Andrew Gribble. We all got the memo. Everybody's wearing Browns gear today. That might be the first. I, th- I think you and I usually do. I think Gribble's the one who's Gribble's more, the rebel. More, uh, I don't know if he's the rebel. Uh, it, he he has he's the birthday boy. Let's just say he has better fashion taste than us. Yeah, I just uh, I go with a variety of looks. Yeah, you because know, if if you wear some Browns gear, odds are you're wearing the same thing as someone else every day in our ah. department, especially. Yeah, that's a good very point. very true. Because yeah, <laughs> we do have one person that orders everybody the same thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll keep go it, with that. Keep it eclectic. Wow. Oh. That's outside yeah. the box thinking that I don't have. I don't know what Shook's doing, but uh, I <laughs> apparently don't wearing Browns gear every day. Yeah, I'm wearing Browns gear. I'm wearing the same thing as someone every day. All right, the Browns. We have a game on Sunday. Hard to believe already. Third game of the season. It's flying by. It is flying. Uh, as the Los Angeles Rams come to town Sunday night football, first time since 2008. Uh, that we will be featured on Sunday night. And looking forward to it. The crowd will be crazy. Everybody will be amped up. Uh, but this is a L.A. Rams team that comes into town with a lot to be worried about if you're the Cleveland Browns and Freddie Kitchens. Yeah, I mean, they're well-balanced on all three phases. I mean, they – I don't – I think their offense got a lot of attention last year, but really I think to me the thing that worries me most is their defense. They have the best player in the NFL and Aaron Donald on their defensive line. They have a really good secondary that got better this offseason by adding Eric Weddle. Uh, and you just it's a team that just – I know the Saints had their issues with, with Drew Brees and everything like that, uh, but to limit the Saints to nine points is impressive, uh, no matter if it's a home game, no matter if you knock out the quarterback. They're playing pretty well. They they bottled up Carolina pretty well in that first game, uh, and they just do – they really do everything well. They pass the ball well. They run the ball well. Uh, they make their field goals. They do crazy stuff on punts. I mean, this is a really good team for a reason. And honestly, I mean, I don't know – if you play that Super Bowl ten times, how many times do the Rams win, do you think? Maybe – I give him four. I mean, how many times does Sean McVay not admittedly watch too much film before right. the game? Right, and I think I think they were the more talented team oh, yeah. by far in that sure. Super Bowl. They just got outcoached. Yeah. And I, I wonder if they had a couple more cracks at it, they, they might have won a few times. And I, I just and they really did bring back basically everyone uh, that matters. The only one who really they lost was Ndamukong Sue, and then they went and replaced him with an edge rusher. I know he's not an edge rusher, but in that defense, it's kind of interchangeable. They replaced him with Clay Matthews, who's playing very well for yeah, them. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a team that usually you worry about Super Bowl hangover for the team that loses, but they, they weren't built to not this be. Group. They, they, they've got all their pieces, and they're, they're playing pretty well. Well, again, I think that they see a window. Here's your window. You have the quarterback, and yeah, you just gave him a big extension, but – this is your time now to make something happen. And they've stacked the roster since they moved from St. Louis. They've made it a point that we're going to win and we need to win now to build the fan base, get a jump start on the, uh, on the Chargers, and, and kind of win over that area uh, of the country from a, from a fan standpoint. And that's what they're doing. And it's funny, too, because the Chargers are playing pretty good football as well. But you know yeah. what? I mean, let's think about how many franchises, and even franchises currently that, are, that f- just kind of – just drift around you know that you, you go through a season and they have no real definitive answer or option under center and then the rams go and spend their first pick of that draft on jared goff and kind of just force him into being effective i mean he's been good the last two years uh with sean McVay, and and seems like they just continue to trend upward and he's he's developed into a legitimate nfl quarterback and and at there were times when he was younger, especially his first year, he stood in the pocket pretty long, which is I always gave him credit for, and even under duress. But there were times where we were like, I'm not sure if this pick's going to work out. Carson Wentz looks a lot better than Jared Goff does, but right now the opposite is true. Jared Goff is a legit quarterback, and he's somebody that an opposing defense is going to have to be worried about every week. And then you add in the rest of their pieces, they've got three solid receivers. They've got an excellent running back in Todd Gurley. They have a pretty good backup, too. And they have an offensive line that changed two pieces in the offseason but hasn't really seemed to miss a beat. So there's really no weakness there. You know, we spent a lot of time this offseason talking about this Browns team and saying, well, I, I don't really see a weakness. And, and that may be true, but you look at the Rams, I really don't see a weakness with that team. No, they don't, top to bottom. I mean, as much as we talk about offense, as much as we talk about defense, the special teams might be the best unit on that football team in terms of how they play week in and week out, almost to perfection, from the kicker 
to the punter, to the coverage units. Yeah, they've got Greg Zerline, nicknamed Legatron for a reason. They've got Johnny Hecker, who's an amazing punter, who is a unit of a punter, by the way. He's like six foot five. He's a stud. And uh, JoJo Natson is a dangerous returner. You know, Mike Prefer said today, JoJo Natson is terrifying to him. He's just, he's one of those guys with elite speed. He's got the ability to get the corner. And once he gets the corner, watch out. He almost did that last week and uh, ended up tripping up. And it was like a return of 30 something yards, but it could have gone to the house. I mean, you just see this guy's potential every time he returns the kick. So, yeah, there's no weaknesses anywhere. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just, you, you got the Rams and the Patriots on, on your schedule arguably the two best teams in the NFL right now. You want to they're, be the best, they, you got to be. Yeah, best. and they came out, both teams came out strong out the gate. They're looking very much like themselves, if not better. I think the Patriots look better than they did last year uh, at any point last year. Sure. Uh, and I think the Rams have something to prove this year. Uh, the only thing you can hope happens is there are some ugly, not ugly, but not as pretty road numbers for this team as compared to home but I thought it was impressive the way they played week one going into Carolina. But I think they are a different team at home. They play really well there, and they're a team that plays really well with a lead. So that's not it's not a team you want to fall behind with because they were they will keep the, the throttle down, and they will make the game a, a laugher if they have to. Like, that, and, and, and one other thing I can point out, Todd Gurley might not be the Todd Gurley he was a couple years ago, but they're dividing his carries a lot more. He, only, he has less than 50% of their carries right now which is crazy compared to what it used to be a couple years ago. But Malcolm Brown's really good, and sure. Daryl Henderson's a good change of pace back. Yeah, and, and you know, it's it's kind of strange because how often do we see a team that was really good last year come flying out of the gate? And we see both teams that were in the Super Bowl come flying out of the gate and, and are clearly the two best teams in the NFL right now. We just happen to play host to one of them in Week 3 and might have some additional adversity we're dealing with this week uh, if we look at the injury report. So, you know, not a, no, no easy sledding for the Browns. Maybe last week a little bit more, but it's, it's definitely uh, not a, a, a schedule. And we knew this looking at it going into the season that, well, you know, it's going to be a tough first six weeks or so, but it seems like it's only getting a little bit tougher. So we'll see how this team handles it. And it is getting tougher. Uh, the injury report, uh, I think every day we kind of wake up and we hope when the injury report comes out, it'll be a lot better than it was the day before. And it's not. Yeah, I missed the week one injury report. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where I, I, I just I, I look at it now, and I, I don't know if there's, uh, you know, this. It's Thursday. It's a little early, but I don't know if there's going to be any healthy scratches on on Sunday. I mean, you might have that many guys down for this one. Yeah, I mean that's there are reports out there. Uh, Ian Rappaport from NFL Network saying that Christian Kirksey will miss Sunday's game with his chest injury, whatever that might be. We know about David uh, Njoku's wrist, and they're trying to figure out, as Freddie said today, what the course of action is going to be with that. You have a whole – your safety room right now, if you had to start today, it's probably going to be uh, Whitehead and, and Murray starting at the safeties for you. Yeah, a little more optimistic on Burnett since he's been out there at least a little bit. But yeah. So is Kirksey, and we got that news today. Yeah, so I, I think there's – and then Hubbard – you know, walking around in a boot, you know, at yeah. one point. Uh, it was early in the week. And, you know, last year, I would caution Browns fans, J.C. Treader for the last seven weeks of the year wore a boot like through Friday, yeah. practiced Friday, played fully, and mi never missed a snap on Sunday. So hopefully that's not the course of action because we're only in week three. But right now that, you know, let, you can only hope that that's going to be the case. This is why you have training camp. That's why you have the preseason. This is why these snaps matter for these guys. I mean, in you, especially at tackle, as has been displayed so far with Kendall Lamb Hurt, there's not just this ripe market of tackles out there that you can just plug in to your system. I mean, so you're going to – if you don't have Hubbard, it's it's going to be Justin McCray, and you're going to probably have to make some adjustments to, to, make, to make things a little easier on him. Uh, but you can't do too much because you have to account for Aaron Donald in the middle there. So, I mean, I, I think it's going to be tough, but – uh, for me, that just makes it even more imperative that you get the ball out quicker. You don't put uh, Baker in situations where he's holding on to it a long time because when you've got issues at, at one of the tackle positions, uh, you don't want to leave your quarterback vulnerable back there because they'll make him pay. Yeah, this is not going to be a game of deep shots, at least not a lot of deep shots no. attempted, and, and rightfully so because uh, they're going to be facing pressure from all angles for most of this game, especially if you have an injury up front. Yeah, no, I, I think that a lot is going to be asked of Baker Mayfield and so, for some of the leaders on the team that are healthy to carry this football team 
uh, on Sunday night. How do you get Baker on track? Hollywood Higgins looks like he's starting to practice a little bit. Knock on wood, he's going to be ready to go Sunday night. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that has to only help. I would think. I would just say get him in rhythm, get get and and get the Rams. Uh, you know, just keep sustaining drives, which is something this team hasn't done really. I mean, that uh, I was just reading an article, a really good article from Connor Orr uh, over at the MMQB, analyzing what the Browns did against the Jets, and there are some numbers offensively that put the Browns in the same categories as the New York Giants, which is not where you want to be. But then your tops near the top in the league in explosive plays. So this has been a, I would say, kind of a boomer bust offense right now, and I don't know if you can survive that way against this particular team. You can win some games that way, uh, but in this matchup, you want to be holding the ball as long as possible, sustaining drives, and really finding a rhythm on offense. Yeah, I think if you think about boomer bust, you think about both ends of the spectrum, right? Well, this is a defense that's not going to give up the boom end of the spectrum, so you want to come away from the bust end of the spectrum as much as possible. So if you're not going to get here and you end up here, let's bring this here and come back to even. And the way you can do that is just with a well-paced, well-balanced offense. It's not trying to do too much with every play, but just trying to pick up three, four yards of play. Because guess what? you got three downs, you get ten yards. You can do three, four yards of play, then you're going to get a fresh set of downs and, and methodically move the ball down the field. And you know what? Maybe you win this game with time of possession because you know you're going to have to rely on your defense a lot as it is, but you don't want them out there all day. So that kind of offense is really conducive for uh, potentially coming away with a win here. And you have the players to do it still. Yeah, absolutely. Show. Yeah, you absolutely do. No, this, 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 is a, this is a lot of injuries, but this is – this is uh, they're not going to you can't use this as an excuse i mean like you've built this roster in a way that you should have capable replacements and honestly the only one of these injuries in terms of backups there's a couple that make me a little nervous that i think really can hurt you and they're both on offense i think it's going with mccray at right tackle he's just he's not a he's he's a guard and you're putting him at right tackle i think that's that raises your concern but he i think he did play well against the titans and then najoku you just you don't have a replacement for that you have Dem- Demetrius Harris, who was brought here to be your complimentary piece to Najoku. Now he's your number one guy, and then you're relying a little bit more on Farrell Brown, doesn't have a ton of experience, and Ricky Seals Jones. I mean, the, that's your ro- those are the guys you're rolling with. So otherwise, on defense, I'm I'm okay with what you have at safety. I, I think I'm okay with Mac Wilson at that spot. I think yeah. it's a it's a, I think I it's agree. a drop off at, from Kirksey to Wilson, but I think you can survive uh, that injury. I just the the ones on offense because that's the area where you're already struggling. Those are the ones where it, you would have loved to see those guys be healthy. And more, most importantly, above all else, if you eliminate your, your penalties, your self-inflicted mistakes, <laughs> you will in give a, yourself a chance in to a be normal in this game season, Sunday night in and a, win this In a game. normal season, we would have been hand-wringing about nine penalties and talking about how we need to cut down the penalties. Yeah. But yeah. it was half of what you had in week yeah. one. And three of them were letting the clock, you know, the play clock expire as yeah. you take the five-yard there were no, there were There were only a couple crippling penalties, I would think. I think I would say the most important penalty in that game was Miles's roughing the passer that was on the Jets scoring drive. Sure. That was really it. You and can't that, have that. Yeah. The, the, Sunday night, the Rams are not the Jets. No. You can't do that. Get, Anytime you do that, they're going to go get seven. They're not going to get three. They're going to get seven. You have to play about as good of a game as you can play fundamentally on both sides of the football, and you have to play as mistake-free as possible. That's both in, in playing within your scheme, within yourselves, and also – avoiding those penalties and, and you know just looking at their depth chart now I just think about you know the, the possibility of McCray at right tackle and I think well man he's gonna have to deal with the likes of, of a Clay Matthews or of a Michael Brockers and they they made some work of the backups uh, Saints offensive lineman after they lost Andres Pete in the middle of that game last week so you really hope that with the week of preparation and his experience and his familiarity within James Campen's uh, offensive line uh, tutelage that he'll be able to step in there and play, I think, above his head because it's going to be necessary. Yeah, we have the players. We have talent. We can match up. We just – Got to play clean. We have to play clean. Yeah. It starts with that. All right, for our keys to the game and our one-on-one with Browns kicker Austin Seibert, make sure you log on to clevelandbrowns.com or wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast, otherwise known as the best podcast available. We will be back with you from a video side of things on Monday to recap Sunday night football. For Gribble, for Shook, I'm Gibbs. This is the best podcast available.